Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here. And today's shout-out goes to Sean Erasmus. Sean was first to say first in one of my recent videos, and thus wins this shout-out. So congratulations. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here, and I have a neat new airplane for you. This is the XK A260 Rare Bear. Now, this is modeled after an actual aircraft called the Rare Bear, which is a uh, modified uh, F8F Bearcat, which was used for uh, racing. And in particular, Reno Air Races used this. Um, still has the uh, decals on it for that, number 77 there, fly, even Fly Navy on the bottom here. <laughs> but again, you know, it's a modified version of the F8F Bearcat. Bearcat. Um, things about it, it's a four-channel aircraft. We have throttle control, throttle. We have full aileron control. We have elevator control and, of course, rudder control. So for four-channel, it's a four-channel airplane. Uh, for beginner pilots, actually, since it's stabilized, and we'll go into that here shortly in a bit, it's constructed of EPP foam, crash-resistant EPP foam, which makes it very lightweight and somewhat durable. Uh, also, that um, EPP foam, this only weighs 75 grams. Because of that, this airplane does not require registration in most countries, folks. It's just too light. And it doesn't have a camera, too. So that's another reason it doesn't require registration in most countries. Now, it is powered by a brushed motor, a brushed 1020 cordless motor. Now, these 1020 cordless motors give these aircraft plenty of power. For those of you who have seen me fly in the Volantex series, um, this also has a 1020, just as the Volantex aircraft do. And that provides a ton of power for these uh, smaller aircraft. These uh, three, this one's 380 millimeter wingspan aircraft, so it allows it to do uh, stunts if you put it into 3D mode. That is now, additionally, it has a quick release propeller on the front here. This just snaps on and off in a crash. The idea being that if you get going to crash doing nose in on this, um, it's better to just for this to just pop off. To, and prevent damage to or to minimize the potential for damage to the propeller and the uh, motor shaft of the aircraft. Okay, it is also powered by a 3.7 volt 400 milliamp or hour battery. Very standard battery, very generic battery. You can get other batteries that will work in this. Um, I'm even going to try a 500 milliamp milliamp or hour with white low C connectors. Again, these are very generic, widely available. You should be able to find uh, additional batteries that will work with this particular aircraft. Now, I mentioned it is gyro stabilized. Um, what I mean by gyro stabilized is in 6G mode, they call that 6G mode, um, all the stabilization system is fully active. Um, it, the aircraft will be prevented from doing rollovers, from do, uh, doing loops, <laughs> it will be. The idea is to prevent this from going upside down and crashing. So if all you need to do when you're in 6G mode is just let go of the sticks and no matter what position the aircraft is in, say if it's upside down and headed to the ground, you let go of the sticks and it will immediately uh, level itself and right itself and fly uh, steady, which makes it very easy for beginner pilots. Now, what makes this diff might make this difficult for beginner pilots, and I've seen this with the uh, Volantec series, is some of these fly rather fast. Okay, <laughs> so a beginner pilot might have a problem uh, staying ahead of the aircraft to turn it in time before it hits a tree or something. <laughs> so keep that in mind. These are uh, these uh, the Volantex and the uh, XK series airplanes all tend to be rather fast airplanes. So we'll see if that's true about this particular one when we take it out. Now, I said it's gyro-stabilized. You can turn off the stabilization. Uh, there's a button on the controller. I'll go over the controller here shortly. But you can turn off the stabilization to do uh, acrobatics, aerobatics with this aircraft, such as rolls, loops, whatever you want. You can fly inverted if you wish <laughs> in 3D mode. So well, I'll give a little demonstration of that when we go out in the field and fly it. We'll put it into 3D mode and see if I can do some loops, simple loops, <laughs> maybe some simple rolls. Um, and we'll see how it works out. So, <laughs> um, one of the things about it, let's talk about that controller. This is the controller that comes with it. It's your generic XK controller that you would see with most of their airplanes. Um, it and, uh, provides up to 150, mil, 150 meters range, they're predicting with this, which is pretty far for this little aircraft. You're going to have a hard time seeing this once it gets out to about 100 meters. So I doubt you'll be able to see it fully at 150. 50 meters. It'll just be a little dot in the sky if you let it go out that far. I don't recommend doing that. Don't let it go that far. 
Now, the things about it, we, the controls that we got on it, they are standard controls, throttle, uh, this is yaw, this is a mode 2 controller. You have to select mode 1 or mode 2 when you purchase this at the time of purchase, so keep that in mind if you're thinking about purchasing this. Um, you know, if you're looking for the throttle on the left, make sure you select mode 2. If you're looking for the throttle on the right, that's a mode 1 controller. So select mode 1 at time of purchase. Uh, most people fly mode 2 in the world, so I recommend if you're a new pilot, consider starting with mode 2 controller with throttle on the left. Okay, other things about it, we do have uh, trim buttons for each of the controls. This is for your throttle trim. This is for your yaw trim to go with your yaw stick. This is the pitch and roll stick, so this is your pitch pitch trim and your roll trim. So if this is drifting off to the right or left, it say uh, it, it's not going to do that in uh, 3D mode or 6G mode. But say you go into to 3D mode and this thing starts rolling on its own, you can counter that with the trim button to to level it in 3D mode. Okay, what have I mentioned? There's one thing about this. Let's compare this to the say the um, Volantex series of aircraft. The Volantex series of aircraft usually have a little button that you can press that will automatically let the aircraft do uh, stunts, either a loop or a roll, depending on the aircraft. You press the button, tell it which way to do its stunt, and would automatically do it. The WL Toys XK models do not have that. You don't have that stunt button on this. Additionally, um, this only has 3D and 6G mode. In other words, expert and beginner's mode that you select with this button here. There is no intermediate mode such as with the XK aircraft or the um, um, Volantex aircraft, Volantex Ishin aircraft. Now, in the intermediate mode, you could it was fully stabilized, yet you could still do uh, loops with the aircraft. <laughs> but uh, this does not have that, unfortunately. That's That was a neat feature I liked on the uh, Volantex, uh, was that mid position, mid mode, that enabled you to do acrobatics while being fully stabilized at the same time. So, But again, this does not have that capability. Other buttons on this, this button here on the shoulder is for rates. Um, or if you want to fly, um, have harder uh, rolls and harder yaw turns, Press this button here and that will enable you to do that um, and it increases the deflection on these control surfaces to make it a more zippy aircraft or more uh, reactive aircraft to your inputs. Uh, additionally, the button on the right here, again, as I mentioned before, enables you to turn off the stabilization system once you're in the air and go into 3D mode and then do acrobatics with the aircraft. So there is that capability. Again, and if you get into trouble while doing those acrobatics, Press that button one more time to go back into stabilized mode so the aircraft will immediately right itself and level itself. So, uh, one other thing about this, this is capable of being used with multi-protocol transmitters and I'm going to try to demonstrate that for you using my uh, T-Pro here, multi-protocol T-Pro. Um, in particular, the protocol that it uses, that this uses, is the V911S protocol uh, with subtype E119. Okay, so E119 of this, the V911S protocol is the protocol you want to use with this particular aircraft. Now, if you want to use this with other receivers, it does have a slot inside uh, for um, S-Bus receivers. So if you want to put an S-Bus in there instead of any of these other receivers or the stock receiver that's in there, you can do it if you wish. Um, I don't see the reason why you need to do that, though. Um, particularly if you're using a multi-protocol transfer. If you want to fly with multi-protocol, just use that uh, uh, E119 protocol for it. So, let's go over what you get in the box. Again, you get the aircraft. You get instruction manual in Chinese and English. It's a little bit difficult to understand, but you also get this very nicely laminated card that shows you how to put this together step-by-step to get you in the air so uh, it is this is nice so make sure you read that card before you go flying um, you get the aircraft as I mentioned you get one spare propeller um, you do not get a spare quick release which is uh, I was wondering why that why that's not a <laughs> included because these do break the quick release connections but it's not provided with this particular aircraft so Hopefully that won't fail in a crash. Um, other things you get with it, you get that 400 milliamp uh, hour, 3.7 volt battery. You do get a charger for that battery. It's a little USB charger that you plug into a, uh, either a wall charger or the 
um, USB port on your computer. This is a little battery, so this should be chargeable. You know, you could be able to charge this even on your USB port on your computer. You also get the controller. You get a mini screwdriver, and the mini screwdriver is needed for attaching the wing right there using one long screw from this screw packet that you get. You also get the screw packet with a bunch of screws that you don't really need. You only need one of these long screws in here to attach the wing. Um, I think they were originally intending to have screw-on landing gear, but none of these landing gear attach points require it. Okay, there's no screw holes for these to hold to hold the wings on. Let me see if I can bring it up closer there. Normally there's a little screw hole there if it's needed, but again, this apparently does not need to be screwed on those uh, landing gear. Uh, and, okay, I think that's about it. That's all you get in the package. So, that is the XKA260 Rare Bear, uh, Reno, Reno uh, Racing Aircraft, modified F8F Bearcat. Let's take this out into the field and see how it flies. I'm excited. Let's see how this flies. Hope you enjoy this flight. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here, and welcome to Pleasant Ridge Park for the inaugural flight of the Rare Bear. Okay, I already have the battery inserted, and I turned on the transmitter. It's already connected. Notice I've got a rubber band wrapped around the fuselage. The reason being, I've just noticed there's an additional screw I needed to screw in from that kit there to hold the battery compartment in, so I'm holding it in with a rubber band. It should work fine. Okay, before we take off, though, I need to check the surfaces. Always check your control surfaces before takeoff to make sure everything's operating properly. So, left bank, right bank, looks good. Down elevator, up elevator, and left rudder, right rudder. And I noticed the rudder is a little off-center. I'm going to trim it up a little using this. I guess that does not work. On, the trims don't work unless you are uh, in 3D mode, I guess. So let's go to 3D mode and do that. Trim it up. Okay, so we should be in 3D mode now. Oh, I'm doing the elevator, the ailerons, ailerons, I'm sorry. I want to do the rudder. Okay, rudder is trimmed. Let me check those ailerons. I didn't mess them up. Okay, they're centered now. I heard that center beat. So we should be good. Going back to 3D mode, or 6G mode. So, and I want to make sure we are in 6G mode. Actually, let's arm the motor to make sure we are in 6G mode. And, and let's check. And the way to check it, folks, is just tilt it and make sure the surfaces are changing. Notice the ailerons tilting as I tilt it right and left. So the stabilization system is working. We should be good to go. Okay, the wind is coming from that direction where I'm facing. So here it goes, the first flight, giving a throttle and a toss. Flies very easy. So we're just going to fly downwind first. And we're going to go with slow speed. Coming around. It does look pretty cool. Okay, let's go to the right. Let's try right bank. Right banking turn with rudder. Flies very nicely and smooth. Okay, let's increase the rates. Second rate. It banks much, much harder, as I, you can see there. And this is high rate. Actually, I kind of like it in high rate. Let's look at that thing bank. Let's see if I can give it rudder at the same time. <laughs> it's, it flies, it banks very well in high rate. Okay, let's go up, turn it around. Now let's go up higher. We're going to put it in 3D mode once we get up higher. 3D mode. Loops, rolls. I am still in 3D mode. 6G mode, <laughs> back to 6G. <laughs> Going a little too far away from me there. Let's try 3D one more time. Throttle up, down, and do a loop. Loop. Rolls and rolls and <laughs> did you see that, folks? You know what I did there? I was in an extremis, as they say. <laughs> I went back to uh, 
3D mode or 6G mode from 3D just before I crashed into the ground. Did you see how it leveled off? <laughs> so, yes, that stabilization system does work well. Coming around, coming around, the wind's blowing in my face right now, or in my back right now. I'm trying to keep it upwind because it's, that'll keep it, the sun at my back. Okay, my fingers are cold, folks. <laughs> it's about 27 degrees right now. Nice flying plane. Really nice flying plane. However, again, it doesn't have that intermediate mode. If you want to do tricks, you got to go up high. Let's try that again. I'm flying in 3D mode right now. I wanted to do a roll and then I came out of it. So yeah, you can switch between 3D and 6G, no problem. Okay, I'm reducing throttle right now because I want to see how it glides. Glides well. Okay, increasing throttle, bringing it back up again. This thing turns on a dime, folks. No tip stalls, I'm trying it. Look at those. <laughs> no tip stalls on this thing. So, the stabilization system is, what I'm trying to say is, very well, working very well on this. Doesn't allow it to tip stall. Flies very nicely. Going up again, 3D mode. Loop it, come on, doesn't have the Back to beginner. Right now, it's, I guess the motor's getting a little weak. Probably from the cold, because my fingers are really frozen right now. Again, it's uh, 27 Fahrenheit with wind blowing right now. Let's see if I can bring it in close and keep it close for a bit. Reduce throttle to do that. It's flying too fast. Uh, I don't want to hit that ground. But I, again, I'm flying in full high rate. It flies very nicely. Uh, for, let's go back to beginners. Let's talk about a beginner rate. You know, even a beginner rate, this is a little bit fast for a beginner. I gotta say, um, again, intermediates should like this. Intermediate pilots, even advanced pilots. Let's take it up high again. Whoa, there we go. <laughs> Almost again. Coming back, coming back. Well, it is flying nicely. Let's bring it in again and show you this thing banking. See why, why they say this is an e it was able to be a great flyer in the Reno air races. Look how th this thing can turn. <laughs> Let me do that again. That's why it was won so many air races in Reno. <laughs> you can really pull oh, G's through the sun. Okay, following this flight, I didn't mention it, but I'm gonna do one more flight after the battery dies on this. We're gonna fly it with the um, uh, T-Pro controller. So I wanna demonstrate, just a quick demonstration though, to show you that you can indeed fly it with the multi protocols using that E911S or V99. I forgot. <laughs> I, I gave it in the tabletop review what protocol you need to use. But yeah, this can be flown with multi protocol transmitters E911, I believe, was the protocol or sub protocol. Okay, I'm giving it more and more throttle, so I ex I'm expecting the battery here to, 
to be done shortly. Boy, I love how this thing turns. Look at that. <laughs> turns on a dime. Oh, 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 oh. Well, here, we just tested that uh, quick release prop. <laughs> quick test. <laughs> quick test of the quick release on this cold day. I hope none of the plastic cracked, but it doesn't seem to have cracked. Let's see. If, okay, see how this goes on, folks? It's got a little bit of ice in there. But it supposedly just snaps right on again. Let's see if we can do that again. Ah, hold on, I got, got to hold it from the front, I guess. To do this. Applying some pressure. There we go. Seems to be on. Let's see if that hurt it any. Looks like it's working. Let's see if we can get back in the air again. I don't see why not. And there we go. <laughs> so that's what the quick release is for, folks. Let you crash it without damaging, with less chance of damaging the prop. You're still, there are people going to be crashing this into concrete and hard objects, and yeah, that will probably damage it. But on a snowy, grassy field, less chance, much less chance. I'm going real slow. I want to see how slow this thing can go. There it is at slow speed. Yeah, I'm in a little rudder and aileron. Let's go the other way now. Look at that. I can see that gyro stabilization system working real well with this. Okay. Just going slow, nice and easy. Let's extend out our flight time a bit. Going up higher too. <laughs> Just barely stalling it. I want to see it stall. Cutting back. Give it an elevator. No, there we go. Got it to stall a little bit there. Try it again. Doesn't want to stall. Okay. Uh, stabilizers are working well. Fly Navy. I guess whoever this Reno Air Racer was that had this plane was a Navy pilot. <laughs> so, Ex-Navy pilot. Otherwise, why would he put Fly Navy on it? Somebody, some of my viewers will probably do a little research on this plane and Give us a little background on the uh, rare bear. Because it is flying very well. And long. <laughs> that battery's still running strong. Must be an Ever Ready. This rudders. Let's try rudder turns only now. You know, a beginner, yeah, as a beginner pilot, you probably should be sticking with rudder turns. This turns nicely with the rudder. Let's go to high rate. No, high rate. In high rate. <laughs> I don't know how it's going to turn low rate. Let's see. Low rate. How's that rudder? Oh, that rudder hardly turns it at all. Oh, there we go. When you slow down a bit, it turns it. But hardly at all. Going to high rate. Yeah. So if you're going to be doing rudder turns as a beginner, you're probably going to be, want to be in high rate. Just be careful with the uh, ailerons, though, if you're in high rate, because, like I said, this thing turns on a dime. And uh, that might startle you how fast this turns like that. <laughs> it turns real fast. Ooh, I did it again! <laughs> Ooh, we'll see if I messed it up that time. That was two. That was a hard nose in. What do you know? It's still in one piece. That. How about this? That's still in one piece too, so darn. See what that EPP foam can do if you're flying in a grass field? <laughs> don't fly this in concrete. I don't recommend that. Or in an asphalt parking lot. I don't recommend that either. Find yourself a nice grassy field. Flyers. <laughs> okay, sounds good. 
and going off for the last last bit of the flight. Yeah, I'm hardly giving or I, I have to give it a lot of throttle now, so it's it's starting to get tired. It's well, the battery's starting to get tired, so we'll soon see what the flight time is. I'll add up all the flight time, excluding the time between each of those crashes, so we'll get a true flight time on this airplane. And also, again, like I mentioned, right after this flight, I got an extra battery. It's a generic 500 milliamp hour battery. It's bigger than the one that comes with the plane. But I'm going to throw it in, and we're just going to do some flights to see how this plane works with a multi protocol transmitter. Well, <laughs> almost got myself that time. I'm just keeping it close here for the last part of the flight. I'm doing zigzags in front of me. Nice plane though. It is a nice plane. Just wish that uh, XK would add that intermediate mode into their, their planes like um, the Ishin Volantex planes have. That mid mode where you can do stunts whilst maintaining stabilized mode. I like that. <laughs> but again, with this one, you can learn to fly in 3D between flipping between 3D and 6G. Just quick press of that button lets you do it. I'm flying rudder right now. Rudder turns. God, it flies a long time, don't it? I love these 1S planes that have come out the past couple years. A few years ago, you mentioned this that 1S planes could fly like this. People would be like, nah, <laughs> they'd laugh at you. But they've gotten really good the past couple years. I'd love to see what they are like in another couple years. Probably even much better. Okay, there we go. So, that's the flight time you get with the stock 400 milliamp hour battery on this chilly day. Keep in mind it's a chilly day. Yeah, that propeller came off again from the crash. <laughs> okay, let me put another battery in this and we'll fly it with the um, T-Pro transmitter. So hold on folks while I do that. Okay, I have the T-Pro bound to it now. Again, set to, uh, what is that? V911S E119 subtype. So it's uh, the mode is, or the type is V1, V911S E119 subtype. Okay, so we are ready to go. Let me put it in the other hand here. I'm going to raise this up too, like so. Checking the throttle out. Checking the controls. They seem okay. And let's give it a toss. So, yeah, there we go. Flying it with the T Pro. Flies just as well, it seems. It seems to be in high rate. Automatically in high rate, but still stabilized though. Um, now, I haven't messed with the switches to figure out how to switch into 3D mode. <laughs> you know, which channel I should be on. I'm sure people over in RC groups have figured that out already. But unfortunately, I haven't. Whoa, sorry about that. Uh, again, it, it seems to be in high rate. Um, you're making real sharp turns with this, and there goes that nose again. So this is what, the fourth time I've popped the nose off of this? <sighs> Let me get the ice out of there. <laughs> that four crashes with the nose, they were all my fault. Turning too hard near the ground. So with that in mind, let's try getting the air one more time here. Again, I'm not going to fly this for the full 10 minutes. Uh, it's going to fly even longer than 10 minutes because I got a 500 milliamp hour in there. I got a bigger battery in there, much bigger. So, but let's take it up higher. And we'll, from way up high, we'll try some hard turns. Oh, let go, let go. Let's go back up high. Yeah, that heavier battery, it notices it. <laughs> 
it does seem to going from 400 to 500 seems to be it does notice it so let's try that again whoa hey you can't you know even this stabilized mode you can do stunts if you go give it a little give it some speed take it up high and then whoa did you see that a barrel roll <laughs> so you can still do some I didn't try that with a stock transmitter but with this transmitter it let me do a barrel roll by giving it both uh, hard rudder and hard aileron and also at the same time pulling back on the stick whoa <laughs> I should give a little more throttle too by the way forgot to mention that let's go back up higher again and try that again more throttle and then hard <laughs> okay that's enough of that before I break it up I don't want to crack it up so just showing you flying it with the T Pro and I think I've accomplished that to show you that you can do such okay so let's bring it in for a landing here shortly I'll go upwind the winds at my back right now so turning it around bringing it in Reducing throttle. And there goes the, the propeller again. That propeller comes off every time, man, when you do a landing. <laughs> At least for me. <laughs> so, put it back on. So that's the, uh, more snow on it. That's the XKA260 um, Flybear, or not Flybear, uh, that's a different company. Uh, what was this called again? Rare Bear, Rare Bear. There it is right there. Rare Bear. So from XK. It's actually a fun plane. So I hope you enjoyed this flight. This is Quadcopter 101 with the Rare Bear using the Multi Protocol T Pro. Signing out. Hi, Quadcopter 101 here again. Hey, if you want to get your own shout out in one of my future videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's real simple. Just go to my channel page and click on that subscribe. And also make sure to click that bell button right next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified when I release a brand new video immediately and give you a chance to get that first shout out. So give it a try, folks.